on Sea Sunday, I suppose it's useful to think about boats. And I know we've got an expert on boats over here, but, or at least he's got a boat, I think, but my first knowledge of boats, I think, came from TV. Did anyone used to watch Bullseye? Yep. Because on Bullseye, it was almost guaranteed you'd win a speedboat if you lived in a landlocked place like Wolverhampton. If you lived near the coast, you wouldn't get a speedboat. But if you were stuck, you'd win a speedboat to be able to live on a trailer in your garden forever and a day afterwards. So I, knew, I learnt a bit about speedboats. Then again, I learnt a bit about the Titanic. And then pirates and that kind of thing. So those kind of boats... Then since moving here, I've learned about the Liberation and the Clipper, but probably best not to say too much about those. Quite different kinds of boats. In the Gospel reading, we hear there's a storm. There's wind. We've had a bit of wind the last couple of days as well, which has been quite pleasant, actually, after the heat. I wonder who likes the wind, who enjoys having the wind. Richard, when you're out on your boat, do you like there being much wind? No, not if there's too much. That's an interesting word. Too much. Not if there's too much, but I think all these different boats. Well, if you've got a sailing boat or if you've got a pirate's boat being a good example of it, well, if you haven't got any wind, it's not going to work too well, is it? You're going to be stuck there. So the wind isn't always bad, but too much wind wind in the wrong place the wrong sort of wind maybe like the wrong sort of snow or something as far as British Rail have been concerned in the past or the wrong sort of tree, um, leaves on the line is wrong is bad I said the young people wanted us to think about Pentecost a bit today so we hear the Acts of the Apostles reading of Pentecost the Holy Spirit coming and then there's two ways it is described in that reading. It's like fire, like tongues of fire on people's heads. Also, it's described like the sound of a rushing wind. Not quite like the distortion we've been having on the, feed, uh, on the sound system recently that hopefully we've managed to isolate just before Mass started today. So we've got the fire and we've got wind. Wind literally like the breath of God. At the start of Genesis, we hear the Holy Spirit of God brooding over creation, moving, blowing over all of creation. It was, it was being created. So the wind was active in that kind of thing. But also, what, what does wind do? If we have a hurricane, it does a lot of damage. If you're stuck on a boat with too much wind, well you're probably worrying about your life. On the other hand, if you've got a windmill, the wind is quite useful. If you've got a wind turbine, it means you're not paying for as much electricity because you're generating it yourself from the wind. So the wind is good, and the wind can be bad. But we can't see the wind. We can see sometimes things blowing in the wind if there's a load of dust in it, it could be quite impressive. We can see what the wind has done. But we can't see it itself. When it's nice weather, I've enjoyed at times driving around with a roof down of the car, with my hair blowing around. That assumes I've not had my hair cut for a while, otherwise it's too short. Sadly, Bridget doesn't like feeling the wind blowing around in her hair in the car. So it can be a bit of a... Um, disagreement on the way back from school sometimes. When I was in Cape Town, they used to talk about the Cape Doctor, a particular wind blowing in from the coast, which was understood to blow the diseases away. The wind would make people healthy by removing that which was bad. But the Holy Spirit described like wind, wind which is powerful, Wind which we realise we can't control. We might try, we might think we can do things, but in the end, if the wind's going to blow there, the wind's going to blow there. A wind that can change things completely. Whether that is blowing down fences, whether that's making you fear for your life on a boat, 
or whether that's taking you to other places. The Holy Spirit's wind can excite us. It can give us new energy by just sort of feel like we, when we feel wind, we can feel reawakened. The Holy Spirit can take us to other places like a sailing boat. The Holy Spirit, God within us, can make new things possible. It can all be a bit worrying at times, but Jesus says, don't be afraid. And so may we be re-energised, re-enlivened, encouraged by the Holy Spirit. Like wind as we wonder what God is doing in the church in the veil here and now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.